Kevin Magnuson has been banned for the next Azerbaijan Grand Prix. His team is not fighting it. The stewards looked as though they're to be blamed for not necessarily being fair with a lot of his penalty points. And I want to make a little discussion on it and also the race's video and article on it and why their point of view doesn't really make any sense. But before we get into that, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and let us get in with this video. So, Haas is inviting this. 12 points over 12 months, first driver in a very long time. Roman Grosjean was the last person to be banned from a Grand Prix, but that was before the penalty point system, I believe, and he was just banned for being overly egregious and flying over some cars in 2012. What does this mean for Kevin Magnussen? Well, he's gonna he's gonna miss out on Baku, which is, I mean, whatever. I don't think the Haas is really gonna be good around Baku anyway, so that's not really a big miss from him. Uh, Ollie Berman will probably jump into the car for him, seeing as the other driver is driving in a separate series, and Ollie doesn't really have any sort of stake in the F2 championship that weekend, so uh, he will jump in most likely. Um, the race recently covered this, and uh, I didn't really necessarily agree with what they, their outcome was uh, for it. But let's let's before we start covering that, let's let's go over who the stewards are. And do you think I could find a list of the stewards this year? I could not. I can find random pictures of them, and like some of the people you will know, like Mika Salo is an F1 driver a long long time ago you'll also see johnny herbert in there but you'll see other people like uh spano always he's, he's basically just a big venezuelan kind of guy who's backed the fia as well as mcclown fander teddy meyer there's a bunch of them though and, and basically what it is is um there is a very confusing faa super license which is somehow different to the fia super license <laughs> The driver's super license, well, it's just the naming convention is very stupid. As well, I must say that the website for the FIA is, although it has all the relevant information you need, I could not find a list of these FIA super license holders. So there's a pool of stewards that will be at a Grand Prix. They will be the ones officiating the penalties uh, that come from the race director. So race director will see something he doesn't like, He'll forward it to the stewards, they'll make a decision, they'll make the penalty on the spot. On the spot being usually within 10 laps or so, hopefully, unless it's particularly hard to uh, figure out and then they'll do it after the race. But this pool of people, who I feel is probably one of the biggest issues with the stewards and their rulings. I don't know who they are, I can't find a list of them. I know some of them and at the start of the weekend they will have a list of people who uh, are officiating that. If we go to this document 60, you can see these people down here are the ones Johnny Herbert, there he is right there, um, are people who made the decision on this and also the stewards as though they're some sort of entity that we are not allowed to know. Uh, but basically this uh, Autosport article just says how this works. So the FAA super license, which is how they get a license to actually become a steward, you have to be in that pool of people who, who own that uh, own that license and understand the sporting codes. Uh, so we went over, so these are some of the people that are in there. Um, here's Michael Massey, <laughs> the, the man, uh, walking around with a bunch of other stewards during COVID. Um, again, I can't really identify any of them, but these are the people who they choose from. I suspect that they're all of like mind. Uh, there are several categories within that as well. There's usually guaranteed starter is what they call it. And that's a person that's always around. There's the race director. Uh, I think there's two of them now, actually. Uh, they share duties, although that's what it used to be. I I'm not sure if that's right anymore. Uh, and then you have s usually a ex-driver. So Johnny Herbert and uh, Mika Sala would be under those that category. And they are supposed to be there to be representatives from a driver's point of view. So not just all people who are not necessarily out of the sport, but not necessarily in the seat ever. Like Michael Massey has never raced anywhere ever, right? So um, they want certain people to be in there that have different points of view. So what Magnus says about this and after the race, uh, he, he commented that they don't want racing. I will admit that that's what it kind of looks like from the outside. Close racing is what happened to the incident. 
um, between Magnuson and Gasly. Let's go and take a look at that right now. So this is the incident. Magnuson comes up the inside at second chicane, uh, turn four technically, puts down the inside, locks up the inside, wax Gasly, they both go off. They both come back on track relatively close to where they came off. No real time lost except for the to the car in front. So he was given a penalty for that. Kevin Magnussen, car coll 20 collided with car 10 in turn four. Uh, they said mostly it was because he was one, out of control, and two, it wasn't the start of the race. They don't specifically say that, but if this had been turn one, I would imagine that they wouldn't have given him a penalty. And the race brings this up as one of their points. They say, when you, when you think about subjectiveness in applying rules, it really does cause a bad feeling for when you treat one person one way and one not and one person the other way. And there's so many mitigating factors between two moving cars going into a corner that it's really hard to officiate international sporting code uh, on every single thing that happens. But I was looking up Lando Norris's and Oscar Piastri's move in the first corner and how close they were. And I came upon this video who compare Vettel and Hamilton in 2018. Now let's take a look at this one. So again, Vettel's on the inside. Hamilton comes to pass him on the outside. Vettel hits Hamilton quite hard, spins himself around. This was turn four, lap one. So this is very much an early, early incident. So in this case, was Vettel fined 10 second penalty and two on a super license? Well, why no, they found that he wasn't at fault and neither was wholly responsible for that particular incident. So what's different between that and Magnuson's? One, Vettel was in control. Two, Hamilton tried to pass Vettel. Three, it was a turn one incident. It was a turn, uh, a lap one incident. Same thing, same corner, relatively same kind of speed cars same contact different outcome different outcome on what they ruled against but the biggest point there tim meyer gerd enzer danny sullivan palo longati and the stewards and in here nobody the same gary connell no nobody nobody's nobody's the same on those two lists and that's kind of what i believe the main issue is back to what the race was saying what they basically summed up was that kevin magnuson's move should have been allowed to happen that he shouldn't have got a penalty for that he shouldn't have got a penalty for running into somebody off track and and i think they really kind of missed the point on several things where kevin magnuson has been a nuisance this year um he's produced great racing and, and I'm, I'm all for racing but he's blocked, he's crashed, he's smashed, and he continues to do it. And I think that's the point that the race misses when they make their verdict on this shouldn't have been a penalty. Should, in my opinion, should this have been a penalty? I'm not really sure. But the biggest thing that I found that was egregious from the race was they're calling double jeopardy, which is ridiculous because they're saying he's going to get a 10 second penalty, but he's also going to get penalty points. You're punishing him twice for the same thing, but you're not. That's not what's going on here. He's punishing 10 seconds for running into him. And then he gets two license points because he keeps friggin' doing it so that you can see a build up there. And, and, and I bring this up only because uh, it's the best comparison I can make. I live in Canada. This is the Canadian rules for how demerit points works. Tracker refused to remain, failed to remain at a scene of an accident, careless driving, stunting, speeding, red lights, seat belts, turn violations, all this kind of stuff. They give you two things. One, a fine, and two, demerit points, which is exactly the same system that Formula One uses. You get one, a fine of time rather than money because money doesn't really matter to the team. Although sometimes they find money, but for really small stuff like speeding in the pit lane and practice sessions and stuff like that, they use the same system. And this is not a system that anybody would say is double jeopardy worthy. No, you're getting fined for what you did and you're getting demerit points on your license because if you keep friggin' doing it, you're, you're gonna get your license suspended, which is exactly what happened to Kevin Magnuson. He got the fine, which was 10 seconds, and he got the demerit points. And he didn't get banned for the next race because the one thing at Monza, he got banned for all the other stuff he did the rest of the season. And the race kind of sums it up that they thought he should have in total about six to eight 
demerit points. That's nice for the race to say, and if they were F1 stewards, I imagine they could probably make their case. But they don't have that super license, and so their opinion means absolutely nothing. Same as my opinion means absolutely nothing. The problem that we have, and the problem that I have specifically, is that these particular fellows here, and the other eight or so that they pull a pool from throughout the year, are not held accountable. These people are not the same people every race. Keep in mind, we live in a type of society where nobody really remembers what happens three weeks ago. I can't really remember who the race stewards were for Spa, and that was really wasn't that long ago, or even for like Silverstone or anything like that. So if you don't have head figures in these positions, you will never ever see this kind of stuff change. It will happen over and over and over again because they're not the same people are in the same positions to make those decisions. The FIA has always said, or at least sort of always said, that the reason that they switch these people out is for two reasons. One, their more vocal reason, which is they don't always want the same people in the same positions because of favoritism. So Mika Salo might not like any other driver than Finnish drivers. So, but he maybe doesn't say that publicly, but he will always give people who are not Finnish a harsher penalty whenever he can. Now, maybe he doesn't like old drivers and they, he thinks that maybe there they should be higher standards for somebody who's been in this sport for so long. They switch these people out so that there's not favoritism. Um, and I guess I sort of see where they're coming from from that. There's only that worry if you don't punish people who have favoritism. So if you, if you just had four people always there, they're not going to have favoritism because they'll get fired. You fire them and you pull their license if they do it. So they're held accountable. So you don't have to worry about that. The second one, which they don't publicly talk about, but most people would understand sort of the pervasiveness of Formula One. Would one of these guys get paid off? I mean, guys in the neutral sense. One of these people would be paid off. Maybe Mika Salo drove for oh, who did, who did Mika Salo drive for? Okay, oh, it says right here, Tyrrell Aerobar, Ferrari, Sauber, Toyota. Oh, okay, so maybe he's in bed with Ferrari or Sa the Sauber group. Everybody else there is gone, which is <laughs> funny. Uh, Ferrari and Sauber, maybe uh, he will treat them more lightly and maybe Ferrari will slip him a little bit of money under the table without anybody noticing and all of those fines will kind of go away and, and he'll treat them more fairly. And that's the worry is that these guys will be paid off. Uh, you say that wouldn't happen, been happening in boxing for 40, 50 friggin' years, and nobody really does anything about it. So that's kind of the worry. So they, and they don't announce who they're going to be until much, much later in the weekend. You don't know who the stewards are going to be until kind of like the Thursday before it happens. At least I don't. I'm sure they do, and maybe a few people around the paddock do, but the general public doesn't really know. So it's, it's hard to see that be those people being paid off now i mean it's still a fairly small group of people who have that license in the pool that they choose from uh but if ferrari were to pay off mika salo and then randomly when they needed him he wasn't the steward you can see how that would kind of subvert some of those worries but in my personal opinion i think the sport is looking like a bunch of donkeys because we have this pool of people that's that's going around you're you're intrinsically looking like idiots and making bad decisions rather than taking the risk and somebody being paid off or there being favoritism. That's a risk. It's not 100%. It's 100% that we're going to keep seeing these stupid decisions because it's not the same people. That subjectiveness and that favoritism that they worry about is not there, but the consistency isn't there. So you're guaranteed to not have consistency. Whereas if you made four of these people responsible for that, 100% for that year, I believe that you would get that consistency throughout the year. I just think that the, the race really did miss the mark on that, that the, the, the reason that we have the points is to punish bad actors over a long period of time. And the reason that we have the, the time penalties is to punish the incident, just like we have in any sort of, like this is a, a system that is common all over the world. Uh, at least in, in most uh, first world countries or the West or whatever you want to call it. So demerit points and fines for the same thing. It's not really what I would be considered to be uh, double jeopardy kind of rules. And that 
Really the main issue why we're having all these things is not because the rules are wrong, but because the people are wrong. <laughs> so I just wanted to make this video to kind of say my piece on it. And that's really, I've been saying this for quite some time that, that the way that the stewards are chosen and the way that the system is set up is designed to fail and that we really should hope that the governing body sees that. I know Ross Braun has said before that he really wants to have permanent stewards uh, and he was kind of shot down by that. So um, see what happens in the future. I hope the next year, maybe or in 2026, we get an overhaul of the way that this works because it's very kind of irritating uh, to see people keep talking about it. We shouldn't be talking about this. We should be talking about the action rather than how the penalty system works. So from that, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.